Remember when you bought your ideal three bedroom, two bath, 1500 square foot home? It was perfect. You were no longer paying rents and you were finally a homeowner. Now, seven years, three kids and two dogs later, that ideal home has become smaller and smaller, more cramped with each day that passes. If you could relate to this, you're not alone. Nearly half of all home buyers last year were families with kids. And 35% of all home sellers said the reason why they were selling is because their home became just too small. There's a lot to consider if you want to upsize the right way. Today, we're talking about three simple steps that you as homeowners can take to upsize to that larger home without downsizing your finances. I'm Lisa Kelly, Lakeland Homes and Lifestyles with Premier Realty, and we're getting started right now. The most common thing that I hear homeowners say when asked if they were considering selling their home, we would love to sell our house and take advantage of the high prices they're getting these days, but we can't afford to buy a house at today's prices. If this sounds like you, ask yourself this, how does your current mortgage fit? As with any journey, you need to know where you are now in order to get to where you wanna go. Let's use a typical example of that newer three bedroom, two bath, 1500 square foot home that you bought seven years ago for around $250,000. Your principal and interest payments are probably around $1,100 a month. A couple of years ago, you may have thought about buying a larger home, but decided the time just wasn't right. After all, larger house means larger payments and you're comfortable where you are. You may have decided that it's best just to continue to pay down on your current mortgage before tackling a larger one. That's sound thinking. There's no doubt those changes would make a larger home more affordable in time. But as you're probably well aware of, the real estate market has dramatically changed, especially in the last two years. Let's take a look at a 13-year historical chart. This chart shows the number of homes that are available for sale in Lakeland. In 2008, there had 740 homes. In December 21, there were 94. In this chart, it shows the average sales price in that same time period. In 2008, in June, the average sales price was about $170,000. And in December of 21, the average sales price was about $323,000 and still climbing. Now let's apply some numbers to that three bedroom, 1500 square foot home that you bought seven years ago. Here's the great news. You have got equity in your current home. And just as a reminder, equity is just a word meaning what your home is worth minus what you owe on it. You bought your house for $250,000. Today, it's worth $375,000. You still owe two fifty. dollars You might have re refinanced, so you, that means you have $125,000 worth of equity. Now, you're going to want to put aside some money out of that $125,000 profit to pay for your selling expenses and your physical moving expenses. And you can expect to actually net about $112,500 to put towards a new home, and that's being very conservative. In this example, I figured a little high on your selling cost, and I figured a little low on your market value of your home. So the chances of your net profit being higher than you expected is a safe bet in this hot market. Which brings us to step three. Let's set a realistic budget on what you qualify for today. Say you qualify for a $400,000 mortgage, but buying below your budget really paid off last time. So let's look at $375,000 homes. You're thinking, no way, I can't afford that. Hold on. Using the same example that we're using that you have about $112,000 of spendable equity, if you bought a home for $375,000 and put $100,000 as a down payment, your new principal and interest payments would be around $1,300 a month. The difference is about $200 on principal and interest from what you're paying now. That mere $200 a month affords your family that four bedroom house that your growing family needs. Plus, you're guaranteed you're gonna have equity by the end of the year because home prices are predicted to continue to rise. Another perk for selling your current home when the demand is so high, your realtor can also negotiate other sales contingencies, like extra time to move, staying in the house after closing without making payments. Some buyers are even offering to pay sellers closing costs. The bottom line is, as a homeowner selling, you're in the driver's seat. And if done right, you could finally upsize to a larger home confidently 
and be completely comfortable with your new payment. When you're ready, let's sit down and talk about how today's real estate market makes it possible for you to confidently sell your home, upgrade to that larger home without downsizing your finances. I'm Lisa Kelly, Lakeland Homes and Lifestyles with Premier Realty. And until then, I'll see you on the next one.